Hi. I'm sorry, this sounds weird, but can I take you a picture? Can I? Ah, perfect. Thank you. What kind of film you It's a Ferrania film. It's an experimental film. Oh, really? From Italy. Oh, yeah. Really interesting. What yeah. ASA? Uh, 80. 80, okay.
So, this is the Halinar Anastigmat. Uh, doesn't it just roll through your tongue? Halinar Anastigmat. I purchased this camera mainly because I thought the lens sound interesting. It's a 45mm f2.8. Um, that was the first thing. I also purchased it because I think it looks cool. Like, it's a, it's a nice thing. You, you see it on a shelf and you're like, oh, I wonder how those pictures look like. Was I surprised with the results? Yes, I was surprised, but not exactly in a great way. Uh, I don't know how much is the fault of the camera, uh, but as you can see, the corners of the images were all blurry. I think if you're looking for that kind of effect, it might be good for you. It has some kind of low-mo thing going on. Uh, I, again, I can't talk about any other uh, copy of this specific camera, because this is the only one that I have. But since the Halinar is not the official camera of this month, this month's camera is the Minox. So I thought it would be nice to have an extra camera and talk about it, and this is the Halinar. It was pretty similar to the Vitoret, uh, but it felt more robust. Uh, and it had a few other features that I think are interesting, and I'll go through them with you. As you can see on the top panel, we have the light meter, which I am not sure is working properly. So, I mean, I tried to see if it was reading, and sometimes it was reading okay, and sometimes it wasn't. So, uh, I just ignored that. Uh, right next to the light meter, there's the shutter button. And as you can see, it's pretty quiet. I like the shutter sound, it's super nice. On the lens, we have the other three parameters that we can adjust. We have the aperture, which ranges all the way from 2.8 to 16, uh, and we have the shutter speed, which goes from 250, 125, 60, 30, and bulb. Um, and then we have the lens, which it's in feet, and it goes from 3 feet all the way to uh, infinity. Before infinity, we have a 30 feet mark. And that's all you have to make your amazing pictures. The, there are a few issues that I found with this camera. For starters, the focusing was really slow, because you have to grab it like this, and it, it's, it's not like you can move it easily with two fingers. So I was constantly, you can see on the video, my hand reaches out, uh, and I'm constantly doing this to focus. So I see like, oh, it's five, me five feet away. So I eh, twist it and now I can take the picture, which doesn't mean that it's impossible to use. So I, I was able to use it on the video and it wasn't a big concern, but it's a slower process than just having the, to focus with like the tip of your fingers or doing like this. Uh, this is a slower version of it. It's a slower camera. It's a camera for taking slow pictures, which is interesting and contradictory at the same time, because I don't think, at least with this copy, I can achieve like studio quality results. Uh, everything will look kind of lo-fi, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I think it's a cool camera to use if you're looking for kind of a low-mo distorted look. I'm thinking maybe I should have cross-processed uh, some film and see how it looks like. I'll probably do that on the next Lomo light camera that I try. Do I recommend this camera? I don't know, man. If you see it for sale and it's not expensive at all, go for it. I think I overpaid for this one because it's in good working condition, except for the distance on the lens and the film, which I think should be corrected so you can avoid those uh, corners. This winding mechanism is really good. It's long though. You can feel it's like a long travel. So it looks like this. which means that when you take pictures, you do the shutter and then to wind it, you move all the way up here. So you feel like the camera might slip out of your hands, but I mean, it's not, it's not hard to get used to it. But at the same time, even though the travel for the winding mechanism is kind of long, I think it's pretty satisfying. It's not comfortable if you're wearing the camera around your neck, uh, because since the winding mechanism is kind of long, your thumb will smash against the strap. Uh, and that happened to me quite often with this thing. So it looks like this. Ah. So it's really uncomfortable. The best way is just you take a picture, then you move the straps down, then you wind it, and then you keep using the camera. So there's more things to be attentive to than just uh, the parameters of the camera. Overall, I think it was a fine experiment. When I tried the Ferrania film, the P30 film with the Canon EOS 10QD, I thought it was way too contrasty and I wasn't really pleased with the results. So this time I had a different approach and I developed the film at 19 degrees uh, for a little less time than advised. And the, sure, the results were a film that was way thinner 
um, but it wasn't that contrasty, so I had more space to play around with. I wanted to underdevelop to see how it works, and in my opinion, it works pretty well. You can be the judge. You can see the Canon EOS 10QD episode, which was developed properly, and then you can compare the results with this one, which was a bit underdeveloped, but still uh, pretty useful results. And that's all I have to say. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about this. It was a cool experiment. This was a great month, guys. I got shot the Minox and while well, I was in New York, and that was super fun to do. Then I got the experience of shooting this other camera in London, so that was like the other extreme of it. Uh, no colors, just a park, just wandering around, old style. It was pretty fun. Um, and yeah, that's it. Summer's here, as you can tell. Uh, so now there's light. I can go outside and take some pictures, which was something that was really uncomfortable during winter. So now I am uh, actually able to go outside and have fun. Thank you so much to my patrons. This camera, the Halinar Anastigmat, will go to one of them. Uh, I'll make a raffle and that person will take this camera and some other person will get the Minox 35. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much to all my patrons for their support and they just allow me to keep making videos and creating content and trying cameras and all our stuff. So thanks a lot. Uh, your support means the world to me. And yeah, that's all I have to say. I will see you next week with another episode. And until then, just keep shooting, guys. <laughs>